for just a moment if you would please we're going to share just a couple of announcements and you know I just want to give you a very warm welcome this morning we're really glad that you took the time out this morning to spend time with us and to spend time before God uh, to, to me that tells God a whole lot about our relationship with him we think this time is important and I think God does too. And so again, thank you for joining us this morning. Folks online, thank you for being here with us this morning as well. You're not having as much fun as we are, sorry. But uh, we're having a great time together. And so uh, if you are a guest with us this morning, we want to ex extend a very warm welcome to you as well. We love having uh, people come and join us for the first, second mm -hmm. time and, and just uh, um, learn to to see how we are worshiping and uh it, it's an important time so again thank you if you are a guest with us you'll notice a, a card in the seat back in front of you uh please take that card fill that out for us so we can get a just an opportunity to get to know you a little bit better find out how you got to abc and and uh not it wasn't by uber or anything it was just you know, how, uh, anyway um but again thank you for being here also on the reverse side of that card is uh, a place for prayer requests for praises we love to hear praises we want to we want to hear those prayer requests as well but we love to hear praises of how god is answering prayer in your life and so if he if he has answered some big praise for you please put that down and when we uh, share the, uh, that time this morning with prayer requests we'll share that praise as well so again thank you for being here um You'll notice the, the boxes on your way out for the offering. Uh, again, please take advantage of that. Uh, we have expenses. We know that. It, it takes money to operate 
uh, a church ministry, and so we are very, very uh, fortunate that you are great givers, and God loves that as well as part of our worship. So again, thank you. Take uh, advantage of those boxes as well. Let's see. I think that's going to be it for the announcements. Is that okay? Amen. Yeah, let's stand up and continue <laughs> worshiping. <clears throat> not a God who came and created and then just walked away. He came to stay. He came to stay in our lives. He's sovereign over our lives. So as we think this next song, let's think about how sovereign really God, that God really is in our lives, allowing us or us allowing him to be sovereign in our lives. Let's sing this together.
with a love that cast out fear. You are working in a waiting. You're sanctifying us. When we
So with that this morning, Father, we start out this week proclaiming that in our lives, in the lives around us, that you are sovereign over us. Thank you, thank you this morning that we can worship you. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Be seated if you would, please. Morning, kids. Come on up. You get the purple one. And you get the red one. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good. You coming up, Brett? Oh, no. <laughs> Well, did we have a good week? Not really. Why not? What happened? You got the flu. It's a little farther. Are you I'm joking? Are you feeling better? I'm glad. I'm glad. Is everybody else feeling good? No. What's the matter, Parker? Uh oh. I have a headache. I think we should pray for Parker. Lord Jesus, we pray for Parker. We pray for his headache that you would cause it to go away. And we thank you that he's here with us to worship you. We thank you that we're all here to worship you today. In your name we pray. Amen. Well, I to help her see better. You got glasses too. I can't see who you are. You got glasses too. That's right. Okay, well, let me ask you guys a question. Do you ever feel Sorry for yourself. I heard a, I heard a, mm, who said a, mm, do you? Uh, I don't know. She doesn't know. You feel sorry for yourself? Feel for, I feel sorry for myself um, accidentally falling off my trampoline. Well, ow, you're not supposed to do that. You're supposed to have little guardrails around the sides. You bounce off. But then Johnny and one of my friends, um, was broke the poles off and the net and the basketball hoop. Wow, that's rough. I might feel sorry for myself too. Well, you know what? Sometimes we do feel sorry for ourselves. Things just don't seem to be going right. And it just isn't fair. All these things are happening to me. And I just feel, am I boring you? And I just feel depressed. Do you ever feel like that? Raise your hands if you ever feel like that. Nobody up here ever feels like that? Okay, well, we have a couple of honest people. Well, you know what? When we feel sorry for ourselves, it's because we're only focusing on the... Oh, wait a second. News alert. Would you like to share that? Mm -hmm. Biting my tongue. Ow! I do. I do that. My tongue or my lip, and ooh, it hurts so bad. And yeah, ow! And then I feel sorry for myself. Well, you know what? When we are feeling sorry for ourselves, things are just not. That's rough. Anyway, may I continue? When we're feeling sorry, we're just thinking about the bad things. But you know what? There is always always a reason to feel good about things. What is the greatest thing that we have to feel, all of us have to feel good about all the time, without exception, no matter what's going on? What is the greatest thing in the universe that's ever happened to us? Who? God. God? And, and, and who? And his, and his what? Son. And his son? Son? His son, Jesus, came to die for us, to pay for our sins. You know what? There is nothing that's ever going to happen to us bad enough to take away the joy that we should feel remembering who God is. You know, Pastor Jeff, when they were singing, he said something. Our God didn't just come and create this world and just walk away and say, you know what, you're on your own, did he? No. He stayed here with us. God is always with us. So if we can get our mind, our focus 
off of those things that are depressing us and remember who God is and what Jesus has done for us, that will change our hearts. That will change our attitude. And we will stop feeling sorry for ourselves. Do we have just another minute, Pastor John? Okay, good. One more minute. I have told this before. I actually have told it to the, to the church here. But there's a little, little saying that I like to say. There's a little saying that I like to say. We got three guys, and we got a wall. Fact, faith, and feeling. These are the three guys. And fact, faith, and feeling are walking on the wall. Well, feeling fell off, and great was the fall. Faith was watching feeling, and faith fell too. But the fact remained, and the fact brought up faith, and faith brought feeling too. And that's what we're talking about. I know that one too. I know. Did I tell you guys that? Yes. You know, when you get old, you start repeating your stories. <laughs> it happens. It happens. But it doesn't, but it doesn't change the fact. Jesus died for us on a cross, so no matter what, no matter what our feelings are like, or even if our faith starts to wane, the fact, no, I'm not, I can't. the fact remains, and the fact will bring up our faith, and our feelings will come with our faith as well. Okay, so let's go down to Kids Church, have Don't Stand Peace, teacher. It was good to have, and, and let's cheer up. Anybody else repeat their stories? <laughs> Remember. <laughs> That's right. <sighs> well, that makes it new every day for us, doesn't it? Oh, well, it's time to come to the Lord in prayer. So let's bow our hearts before God. Heavenly Father, we are so grateful to be in your house. We're so grateful to be here with our family. The opportunity to come and worship you and remember, Lord Jesus, what you did do for us. Father, that there is no circumstance in our life that can take our joy if we're looking to you and if we're remembering what you have done for us and what you have in store for us, Lord God. Uh, Heavenly Father, we do want to lift up our country to you right now. Our country is in turmoil. This world is in turmoil, Heavenly Father. And we pray for our leadership. We pray that you would... Change hearts in the leadership of this nation, Lord God. Father, as there is just craziness going on, uh, laws are being passed or brought forward that are just not making sense. Heavenly Father, we pray that you would turn the hearts to you, Heavenly Father, and that those things which are evil will not be called good, and those things which are good, which are of you, will not be called evil. Father, help us to continue to pray for our nation and our leadership, to continue to lift you up and exalt you, Lord. Father, I pray for one who's, uh, whose brother-in-law has been on kidney dialysis for the past week. We pray, Lord God, we thank you that he is getting better and his kids are, kidneys are starting to work again. So, Father, we lift this one up and pray that you would touch his body, continue to strengthen him, Lord God, and that your Holy Spirit would be with him continually, giving him your joy. Another one continuing to pray for recovery uh, in Royal Life Center, Lord God, and we thank you for that. And... Uh, and we pray for, we continue to pray for Heidi, Lord God, for her foot to continue to get better. And we thank you for the healing that you have been bringing about. Another one praying for a buddy's dog. Uh, Lord, I pray that uh, whatever's going on with his dog, that you would bless it and allow it to be healthy and strong. And praying for family back home, praying that they uh, know that everyone here is doing well. And also praying for uh, Royal Life Center, Lord God, and that, uh, and that their daughter, uh, knows that uh, is doing this for her. So we thank you for that, Lord God. Uh, Father, another one praying for a brother struggling with mental health. So Lord, we do lift that to you as well. And we thank you that your Holy Spirit can bring clarity and healing in that situation. Another one praying for uh, one who has cancer in spots and has been going through chemotherapy, Lord. So we pray for this one, and we ask you to bless and strengthen and heal, Lord God. Cause that cancer to, to totally leave this body. Another one just praying for health, Lord God, and, uh, and is happy that they're here. So, Lord, we lift this one to you and ask you to meet them in their need, Lord God, for health. 
Another one praying for family, for goodness, and for their heart and soul, and asking forgiveness for all their sins, Lord. So we thank you for that, and is so joyful that their family takes care of them, Lord. So we thank you, Lord Jesus. Uh, Heavenly Father, another one praying for one who's uh, having trouble with C uh, breathing with COPD, Lord God. And uh, we just pray that you would touch this one and another one who's in the hospital with COVID. So, Lord, we pray for that one and pray that you'd continue to uh, bring about healing in the situation with COVID, Lord God, and uh, completely uh, deliver this nation and this world from that uh, attack. And another one praying for her granddaughter who's been passing out a lot and they don't know why. So we, Lord, we lift this granddaughter to you. We ask you to touch her, Lord God. And uh, she's only nine years old, so we ask you to bless this little one, Lord. We thank you for that and is praying that she's grateful. That is, it's that time that her father's been in heaven for a year, and she's grateful that uh, he's no longer suffering, that he's in perfect joy in you. And we join, Lord God, with her in, in that uh, joy of celebrating his being present with you. Heavenly Father, we lift these to you. We ask you to touch everyone who's been mentioned, Lord God, and be with this church family and be with Pastor John as he brings your word today. Amen. We have a couple with us here today that is living out what we're talking about. Uh, Steve and Wendy, why don't you come on up? And we want to just share, uh, have them share an update of some of what God has been doing in their life and is continuing to do. So probably. Keep them in your prayer. Be asking, how can we continue to support you in that? So it's good to be back. Um, you probably didn't even know I was gone last week, but I was. And nice to be back with you this week. Excited to share with you from uh, God's word this morning. But 
I want to give you some ministry updates uh, this morning. We have uh, a lot of exciting things that God is doing in our church family. And so just by way of, of quickly giving you the one-minute debrief on all these, uh, this afternoon at 3 o'clock, we want you to come out for the Child Evangelism Fellowship uh, concert and fundraiser, and just this room will be all different. Um, and so come on out for that. There's going to be great worship and music and sharing. You'll get to hear about the ministry. Uh, so br uh, hope you'll be able to make that this afternoon. Any addition, Mara? That's good. Thumbs up. All right. And um, if you are available after the service today, uh, we need to move 140 chairs. So uh, we would love any help that you would like to give with that. Just talk to Mara. She'll uh, help you know what to do with that. So, okay. Uh, secondly, uh, next week is a Fifth Sunday Fellowship, and it's a chance for our church body to get to know each other better, maybe someone you don't know, enjoy meal, talk, share, and at that meal, uh, ABC is providing the hot dogs and hamburgers, somebody say amen, that's going to be great, uh, so yeah, just come and enjoy that, stay after church, but you could bring a side dish and or a dessert, that would be great for that fellowship time next week. And then two weeks from today, we won't be here. Uh, we will be in the park. Uh, it's our Worship in the Park Day on the 5th of June. We'll be at Flynn Park, which is just off Gale Gardner and Gurley over here. Uh, nice little park, beautiful spot. Want to encourage you to prayerfully think about bringing friends that day. We will begin at a different time. We're starting at 10 a.m. so that we can kind of make it a, a service and picnic. So bring your picnic food, bring a chair. Uh, ABC will provide the water bottles for that day, but come on out and bring others. We'd love to have you there on that day. Worship in the park. That's two weeks from today. And I want to remind you that we also have the Conquer Series for Men coming. Uh, that's going to start two days after that on the first Tuesday of June, the 7th. And uh, it's a great series. Uh, we have three different teachers for that series. I'll, I'll begin the series on the 7th. And we're looking forward to all meeting together as men. We're going to be advertising in our community. Please help us get the word out, will you, for that uh, series this summer. Because uh, every man needs uh, to be encouraged in their walk of purity with the Lord Jesus Christ. So I uh, hope we can all gather for that time. And it's not on the board there, but I'll just, just for fun, I'll toss out one more. Uh, the week after that, uh, on uh, Sunday the 12th, is our annual Mexico Mission Pie Auction. So um, I'm already excited. And uh, of course, we all know the best pie, right, Jeff? The, what, what is it? It's not strawberry rhubarb. No, it's butter pecan pie. Oh. Yeah, OK, well, anyway. So we're excited for that. Take your Bible, if you would. Turn with me to the Book of Ruth. And uh, chapter 1, and we're going to specifically be talking today about overcoming bitterness, overcoming bitterness in our lives. So uh, let's stand for a moment. We're only going to be focusing on three short verses, verse, starting with verse 19. Thank you. Ruth chapter 1, verse 19. Now, two of, now the two of them, that is Naomi and Ruth, went until they came to Bethlehem. And it happened when they had come to Bethlehem that all the city was excited because of them. And the women said, is this Naomi? But she said to them, do not call me Naomi, call me Mara, for the Almighty has dealt very bitterly with me. I went out full, and the Lord has brought me home again empty. Why do you call me Naomi, since the Lord has testified against me, and the Almighty has afflicted me? So Naomi returned, and Ruth the Moabitess, her daughter-in-law, with her, who returned from the country of Moab, and they came to Bethlehem at the beginning of barley harvest. Father God, we all encounter difficult times. Here in this room, we're struggling with them. And Father, we need your perspective. And so we're asking you, Lord, to give us a new vision today as we look at your word in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Thanks. 
Got a, got a question for you. Is it half full or half empty? <laughs> it's, it's half what? It's half, all right. What about now? Is it, <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> perspective. Perspective. That's kind of what we're looking at today, dealing with bitterness. And it was, sometimes uh, we have what I call the Eeyore syndrome. Oh, woe is me. See if I can get the voice right. We're all going to die. Okay? Everything's wrong. Okay? So thinking about dealing with bitterness, it's so easy to carry grudges. It's so easy to become bitter. It's so easy to fuel resentment. It's so easy to look at the dark side of life and the outcome of failing to take everything to God is a poison to our soul. And it separates us from our God who is love and who in fact is powerful and able to do amazing things. By contrast, the outcome of dealing with bitterness before God is release and joy and peace. I think we heard about God's peace last week from Steve. And it's a rest and a closer relationship with God as we give these things to Him. So I just want to begin by asking this morning, are you wounded? Are you hurting? Are there issues that are dragging you down? And will you feel those deeply? And if so, how are you responding to that? How are you responding to that? Buddy Hackett, that great theologian, Buddy Hackett, he said, I've had a few arguments with people, but I never carry a grudge. You know why? Because while you're carrying a grudge, they are out dancing. I like that. It's a poison to you. So as we think about Ruth this morning, first of all, I want to say uh, we do have uh, a Mara and a Naomi in our church. <laughs> and uh, the Naomi who wants to be called Mara in this passage is by no means reflective of the awesome, wonderful, godly ladies that we have in our church. Amen. In fact, I talked to Mara. She gave me her testimony. She said, I, I was, you know, my name's Mara, but I came to Jesus when I was a child and I gave up bitterness when I came to Jesus. I said, Amen. Amen. So today we're looking at these two. And in our text today, Naomi is not only bitter, but she wants to even take on the name bitter. Call me a name that means bitter. Because Naomi, by the way, means pleasant. Means pleasant. And so we all sometimes fall into that Eeyore syndrome. And instead, God has a better plan. So I see here these two women. And perhaps in my mind, I can imagine that before they leave Moab, they go to visit the graves of their dead husbands. There's no children along. They're setting out with no home. They don't know where they're going to. No place that they know of. No resources. No family, extended family. No money. And they're hoping, or at least I think Ruth is hoping, to begin a new life. I don't know what they talked about on the road. We know that Naomi was a bitter woman with a faltering faith in her God, the God of Israel. I wonder, maybe Ruth along the way might have been the one to encourage her, perhaps. But we can be sure of this. Naomi was walking a road of bitterness. Ever been on that road? How do you overcome it? How do you overcome bitterness? Well, I want to suggest three or four ideas for you this morning as you approach the hurts in your life, the difficulties in your life. First of all, we need to change our perspective. I, I think that's right at the outcome. You've got to look up. You've got to look up. Jesus told us things were going to get rough. Um, he didn't 
pull any punches in that. He didn't promise us a rose garden. In Luke 21, a parallel passage to Matthew 24, he says there's going to be false Christ, there's going to be wars, there's going to be pestilence, persecution, there's going to be famine, there's going to be distress on the earth, there's going to be great perplexity, there's going to be roaring of the seas, men's hearts are going to fail them with fear, the expectation of those things that are coming on the earth. And the very next verse says, now when these things start to happen, sit down in the dust, shake your fist at God, complain, no, no. No, it doesn't say any of that. It says, when these things happen, lift up your heads because your redemption is drawing near. Now, that's true eschatologically in terms of end times events, but it's true every day. Every day when the tough times come and you see them coming or you're worried about them coming, you have the opportunity to lift up your head as your redemption draws near, the Lord Jesus Christ draws near to your heart and to those circumstances. When life happens, lift up your head. I don't know how many sermons you remember. Um, I probably shouldn't ask you that. Uh, <laughs> a lot of times it's hard to remember. And as I think back, I mean, I've, I've shared, I was blown away by this figure as I thought about this. I have shared one thousand messages from this pulpit. You know, I know, I know. <laughs> That's a lot. And I don't remember a whole lot of messages, but I, there's one that stuck with me. The preacher came out. He had not said a word yet. He came to the pulpit and he said one word that I have not forgotten. He put his arms up like this. He said, Amplificati! And I went, what? Amplificate. He said, it means make bigger. He said, when you think about your view of God, your view of God is too small. Make it bigger. Make it bigger. As you walk through your day, you walk through your life, and you're experiencing difficult circumstances, your view of God is too small. Amplificate. Because when he gets bigger, your problems get small. That's stuck with me. I hung on to that one, and it's been so true. I get to do rounds at the hospital all the time. I'm, I'm scheduled again for this Wednesday. And as I walk through, every time I go through, I'll visit 20 or 30 patients. And it's always interesting, the contrast. I mean, you can go from one room where it's all dark and black and horrible, and yeah, they're going through very difficult things, but they don't have God. There's no eyes on God. There's no amplifying because they don't have him. And I can go right into the next room with the person with just as big problems, just as serious, just as life-threatening, and they're glowing because it's all about Jesus. And I'm going to see him soon. And they have amplified God in their life. Amplificati. Paul said that we're supposed to do a few things giving thanks. Okay? Everything, everything give thanks for. That's a journey for all of us, right? Not one of us are there, okay? But in all things say, thank you, Lord. I know you're a great God. You're able to work through this. Same thing in Philippians 2, Paul said to do all things without grumbling or complaining. <laughs> okay? It's a perspective thing. What are you looking at? What are you focusing on? I was at a retreat as a young man, and uh, that weekend there was an elderly gentleman there, and he had so much joy, so much joy. He was just so joyful about God and just full of joy. And at the end of the evening, we were walking down the hall to our rooms that we were staying in, and I said, man, I just want to thank you. you just, you're so happy, so full of joy. It just really encouraged me. And tears started to come down his eyes because he said, oh, thank you for sharing that. I don't tell people this, but I'm in pain all the time. And I just really want to reflect the joy of my Jesus. So cool. I mean, I'm shaking hands with people going out the door in this church, 
and I'm asking uh, some of our elderly saints, so how you doing? Fine, liars. <laughs> I know that. But it, I mean, this is not a biblical uh, uh, doctrinal statement. It's kind of sanctified lying because they're saying, yes, things are hard, but you know what? My God is awesome. He's got me. And because I'm in him, I can say, I'm doing fine. Amen. Amen. Question is this. Is God at work or not? Do you know, Romans 8, 28, do you know he's working all things together for good to those who love him and are called according to his purpose? Amen. You know, just that is just before the passage that says nothing in all creation is going to separate you from the love of God that's in Christ Jesus. I wonder if our Naomi was able to lay hold of any of those truths on that journey to Bethlehem that day. I want to give you a tough quote. George Morrison said this, nine-tenths of our unhappiness is selfishness and is an insult cast in the face of God. Okay? Okay. So I'm gonna, I want to repeat that for you, especially if you're a man. Men need it twice, so let me give that, give that to you again. <laughs> well, that's biblical. Paul, Paul, Saul, Saul. You know, men need it twice. Nine-tenths of our unhappiness is selfishness and is an insult cast in the face of God. So I think Naomi was imprisoned by her bitterness. So number one, if you're counting, lift up your eyes. Lift up your eyes. Change your focus. Amplify your God. Number two, you need to praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. You say, well, pastor, I can't praise him. Horrible things are happening. No, you can. <laughs> you can praise him. Okay? You might want to come alongside of David. Horrible things were happening for David too. But he wrote this. I will praise you, O Lord, with all my heart. I'll tell of all your wonderful deeds. Instead of talking about his negatives, he's going to talk about God's positives. Goes on, verse 2, I will be glad and rejoice in you. I will sing praise to your name, O Most High. You know, if you feel like your house is a dark, difficult place, if you feel like there's evil around, try some praise music. Put on, I mean, if you, if you love the, the depth and beauty of the hymns, put them on. If you love the modern praise worship, put it on and praise. Praise the Lord. You know what? The devil has to flee. He hates that. He hates that. So we need to praise the Lord. You may want to take Psalm 9, 1, and 2, print it out and put it on the mirror in your bathroom. Because then when you come in in the morning and you look and you see your face, oh, Not saying anything negative about your face in particular. But you say, Lord, I want to praise you today. Help my heart to be lifted up in praise to you over my circumstances. Praise the Lord. Number three, don't blame God. Don't blame God. Verse 20 and 21 in our text, she said to them, do not call me Naomi, Call me Mara, for the Almighty has dealt bitterly with me. The Lord has testified against me. The Almighty has afflicted me. Do you see any kind of blame game going on there? It's, there's nothing new. Back in the garden, God, it was this woman you gave me, you gave me, who gave me the fruit. See? Blaming. Blaming. Wow. We. Blame God. In fact, Naomi used the name for God, El Shaddai. That, that name is all-powerful. But she didn't have a view of God being all-powerful over her circumstances. The one who could have helped me, I think she was saying in her bitter heart, God, if you're powerful, you could have helped me. Why did you let this happen? Okay, been there? Okay. Felt that? Why did you let this happen to me? It's easy to go there. 
And I just want to clarify for us this morning, folks, we live in a fallen world. <laughs> this world is not our home. This world is fallen. We blew it. We rebelled against God. We sinned against God. We walked away from God. The consequences of sin came, the curse. Uh, we deserve death because of our sin. Uh, sickness entered uh, the human race. And so there is very, very hard things in our world. There's disease, sickness, bitterness, broken relationships. But they're not God's fault. And I have good news. If you feel like reading the end of the book, he's going to make all things new. He says that. If you need a spot for it, I think it's Revelation 21.4. I make all things new. And so he will do that. And he does that in small measure in our lives now. Praise God, he does. And he brings joy and light and help and restoration uh, as we go along this dark world. But don't shake your fist at God. It's a result of our rebellion. God's heart is 2 Peter 3, 9. It's not his will that any should perish, but all would come to repentance. That's God's heart. He doesn't want anyone to perish. What's happened to you may not be God's will at all. It may have happened just because of this fallen sinful world. Um, I'm going to reference a book, but I want to ask you ahead of time, please don't send me emails. Okay, I'm not, I'm not exalting the book, but I'm going to make a point from it. The book is The Shack. I don't know if you read it, saw it, went to the movie. Okay, And I know... Um, I know that God the Father is represented as an African-American female. I know all that. Don't write me letters. Okay, I got that. But there's a point that meant a lot to me in that story. At the end of the book, the lead character in the book who lost his five-year-old daughter to abuse and murder, okay, about as dark as it gets, was given a vision from the Lord of a beautiful field and in that beautiful field, just if you could imagine the flowers and the grass and the blue sky and the mountains and maybe a little stream running through it, just a gorgeous field. God gave him a vision of the Lord Jesus playing with his five-year-old daughter. And it meant everything to him. And isn't that the reality? That God is there in the end to make all things new and to restore all things. God is good all the time. And on your part, by the way, um, since we're figuring out how this is all working, it might be good to confess sin. Because it could be your own sin that's blocking you and keeping your heart bitter. When you sin, you push God away. You step out from His hand of blessing. And Remember, we talked last time about finding that place of blessing. So the question isn't so much, why doesn't God bless me? The question is, am I blessable? Have I moved into a place where God can do the blessing? Not only is God with you, brothers and sisters, He is for you. If God is with us, who can be against us? Confess your sin, trust Him, look to Him, and know that He is giving you blessing. Somebody said, we need to also count our many blessings. Count our many blessings. I, I grabbed these things offline. I looked at this one. When I count my blessings, I count you twice. Isn't that sweet? And then I thought, well, maybe it's because you're only half a blessing. I, I don't know. I think that through. <laughs> so let's just, we'll put this one up there. Count your blessings. Count your blessings. Was Naomi really that poor and empty and destitute? Did she really not have anything going for her? I mean, at first glance, it looks like that. Dead husband, dead sons, no income, poor, no home. It looks horrible on the face of it. But you know what? She had blessings she could be counting. She had life. She was still living. Now catch this. As long as you're alive, God can do new things in your life. She had life. She could have said, Lord, thank you that you spared me. 
Thank you that you have new plans for me. She had a future purpose. God was graciously bringing her back to Bethlehem. Her slate was clean. She was being given the joy of a new start, a new beginning. Do you know that tomorrow could be a new beginning for you? God's able to do that. He's a God of new beginnings, amen? A couple of years ago when I was in college, <laughs> why are you laugh? Why is that funny? Yeah. <laughs> I was a part of a group called Campus Crusade for Christ. And uh, we, were, we, we did all kinds of hokey things to try to share Jesus on campus. One of them was we, we wore a button. I was wearing this button. And the button said this, P B P W M G I N F W M Y. And I, I know when you read it, it looks like Pabuinthnami, you know. So people would ask, what's that? What's that mean? And so we have an opportunity to answer. Anyone know anyone remember? Anyone remember that one? Okay, okay. Please be patient with me. God is not finished with me yet. And that's so true. God's not done with you. He has a new plan. He has a purpose coming. He has joy in your future. The suicide rate in our country is out of control because people don't know this. They don't know the God of love that is with them that has promises and future and joy and good things for them. <coughs> Naomi had life. She had a future. She had a family she could count in verse 19 all the city was excited and the women there's women coming around her she has that blessing of coming back into family and sometimes we don't thank god for the ones around us that god has placed there in our lives she had left the enemy country she was coming to the family of god in bethlehem and by the way, as long as we're counting her blessings, she had one very close, very supportive friend, Ruth. How many know that's gold? When you're going through a tough time, you got one person who's alongside you and saying, hey, I am for you. I am there. And of course, if we just turn back a little in chapter one, I'm not leaving you. I'm going where you're going. I'm staying with you forever, even till death, that kind of friend. She should be counting that blessing. You've got someone like that in your life, call them today and thank them. <laughs> That's a blessing that they're there. So Naomi was not alone. And I saved the best blessing for last that she should be counting. She had the living God with her. The Lord is mentioned 25 times in this book. God was with her. And yet she was sitting on the, down in the dust and shaking her fist and blaming God. I like this quote by President Woodrow Wilson. I firmly believe in divine providence. Without it, I think I would go crazy. Without God, the world would be a maze without a clue. She had God. When we fear him and love him, we need fear nothing else. On his deathbed, John Wesley said, Best of all, God is with me. Not only is he with you, he is for you. God is with, with you. Who could be against you? So when you have a relationship with God, it opens up a treasure of blessings. And I want to close with this idea today. That is your identity in Christ. It is who you are. And I think part of our experience of depression, of complaining, moaning, grumbling over circumstances, we forget who we are. The enemy wants you to forget who you are. He doesn't want you to know your, your true identity. So let's just remind you a little this morning. You are a child of the King of Kings. You are forgiven. You are blessed in the beloved. You are filled with the Holy Spirit of the living God. 
You are empowered for kingdom work. You have a future hope in your God. You are co-heirs with Christ. We're clueless about what that means, about all that you have in Christ. And Christ is in you, and in him you have the victory. Hey, Moby, come on, come on up here for a minute. It's a little scary, but I'm going I'm to call up Moby here. <laughs> so Moby, man, let me, let me, you probably don't need this, but let me grab it. For you. I, I just want to ask you, you seem to have a little joy Amen. once in a while. And I just want to ask, because your past hasn't always been like that. No, sir. What, what is giving you joy? How come you're not just shaking your fist and blaming God? Jesus. Today? I let Jesus drive every day. That's what we do. Doesn't tell, mean I don't have bad days, but every day we let Jesus drive. Tell me about it a little more. Tell me what's going on. Well, we start our day. We get up. And I don't always wake up happy, blessed, and pumped up. I don't. But we get up and we get in the Word at home. So we get up extra early and uh, we read a little bit in the Word, my wife and I, and we praise Jesus. Doesn't mean we don't have bad days. She's like, well, I'm just going to be praising Jesus. And I'm like, well, I'm just going to be praising Jesus too. We're, look, we're looking at each other praising Jesus. But it doesn't mean we don't have bad days, but we just put Jesus first. Everything we do. So we put the armor on, and uh, I have a saying that's a little rough, but in the recovery home, uh, I say, well, we don't have a needle in our arm. We're not in prison. Let's just start right there. Amen. Amen. So, I don't know Amen. if that helps or it not. It helps but, a lot. But, uh, but I'm fired up. Jesus is driving. Thank you, brother. All right, Thank you. <laughs> okay, so Moby will be at the doors. You go out. Just rub on Moby. <laughs> out of the bitterness and darkness and defeat come walking this, la this lady, Naomi. She walks into Bethlehem. And I just want to mention this as we finish this little three verses. She walks in at the harvest season. It's a picture for us. Spring is coming. New life, new growth, new things happening. Springtime. It's a time when the community is giving praise to God for his goodness. A time of new life and new beginnings. And so, brother and sister, it is never too late. It's never too late to lift up your eyes for a new beginning, to praise God, to stop blaming him, to confess your sin, to count your blessings, and to remember that you indeed are a child of the living God. Amen. Let's stand. I want to take a moment in prayer with you today as we close. What is it that's keeping you down? What is it that's blocking you? What is, what's the hurt? What's the scar? What's the tear in your heart? What's the pain? Would you take just a moment in prayer right now to lay that at the feet of Jesus? Sense his hand on your shoulder. Revelation 1, he touched the shoulder of John and said, I am the life. I hold the keys of death and Hades. He's putting his hand on your shoulder. Let me take care of you. I'm with you. Don't despair. Rest in my love. You're my child. I have good plans for you. Let me turn your bitterness into joy. So keep your eyes on me. You walk with me daily. And today, maybe just today, rest in my love. In Jesus' name.
He will be. He always will be. And so it's us who has to come before him and say, God, I want you to be sovereign in my life. So some, for some of us, it may be an attitude change like Naomi. You know, we may have to say, okay, God, you allowed this in my life, but I know it's for a reason. So I'm going to give you praise because I know that you're going to be there all the time, directing my life. So as we, uh, as we sing this last song, talking about the goodness of God, let's remember that, that God is with us all the time. We just have to allow him that sovereignty in our lives to control us, to guide and direct us. And when those tough times come, like Moby is talking about, you know, it's not every day that it's all roses. Sometimes we feel those thorns. But God is allowing that in our lives for a purpose. And we need to remember that. Let's sing this last song as we close.
now may the Lord bless you and keep you and make his face to shine upon you and lift his countenance toward you and give you peace. Amen. Thanks for dismissed.